Nalita Besson, thank you so much for joining us on the Plant Trainers podcast today. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Well, it's an honor to have you, and we're lucky that we do. And before we get into it, we wanted to know if you have a moment of gratitude to share with us and our listeners. My moment of gratitude is just being able to have such really good friends that I have in my life. That really is um, one thing that I'm very grateful for. They say friends sometimes are more important than family, right? We choose our friends and our friends choose us. Family we get stuck with. (laughs) <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's good when you have friends that have become like family. Yes. So I'm I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, friends come and go, but the good ones stay forever. So we all got to try to find the good ones around us so we can keep those relationships strong and build off of them. Definitely. Definitely. So we wanted you to give the listeners a little bit of a background and let us know what life was like for you before you had started on your plant-based journey. Okay. So I guess life for me, um, I grew up as a vegetarian, but a junk food vegetarian. I was the only one in my family that was. Um, I come from a family of 12 kids. Um, My parents are originally from Haiti. And um, I was born and raised in Boston. So I was the first child born in, in, in the States. And um, I was heavy my entire life. I was um, overweight and obese. And um, I guess by the time I got married and my husband also was obese, um, and around the time that I decided to make a change, I would say maybe a year or two before I really made a big change, my husband and I just said, well, let's cut out sodas. Um, and cutting out sodas actually helped both of us lose 20 pounds. Um, but that was like a drop in the bucket because like I was a size 24. My husband was probably like a size 44, maybe 46 before that. He was much larger even before that. So, but it helped. At least it helped me to realize, well, I could do something. I could, you know, because I, we I wouldn't say I was totally addicted to soda, but I drank it often enough. It felt good when I did drink it. So just cutting it out altogether and cutting out most juices, you know, was something that made me feel like, okay, I could make a change. Um, But by 2013 is when I really made a big change in my lifestyle and my diet. So let me go back to the soda for one more for one more second. When you took away the soda and those refined juices, did you find that you needed to replace it with something else? Did you need to have like unsweetened tea? Or were you just good with water? You just made that decision that you weren't replacing it, you were just cutting it out? I I was just cutting it out. I mostly just replaced it with water. Sometimes, you know, I would have soy milk, but it wasn't like something I would have to drink daily. Like I needed to have something. I just kind of got used to water is good. Um, And which is what I'm I'm still doing. Water. (laughs) Yeah, water is good. (laughs) Soda and soft drinks and pop is such a huge problem these days. Our kids are drinking them. They're consuming so much. I find actually that we're consuming fewer sodas but more juices. And I Definitely. think a lot of our young population don't realize that those juices, if they're refined and, and processed heavily mm-hmm. juices, the sugar content in those are super high. And that has a huge effect on everything we do from performance to behavior to just quality of life. And it, it's such a root cause in so many issues that that people have these days and our schools don't realize that it's such a big big problem it's also keeping them addicted to other sugars as well so more more addiction to candy whether they Mm -hmm. realize it or not and i know that you talk about food addiction a lot so then you found plant-based and how did that how did that come about well i had gone to florida on vacation with my family and um, we got back, you know, I'm a teacher, so I was on, on summer break and it was in July and I just was not feeling well. Um, I was I was having a lot of joint pains everywhere in my body hurt. I had had gallbladder issues. I had gallstones. I still probably have them, but I just don't feel them. Um, and I had gallbladder attacks all the time. Everything in my body hurt. My skin hurt. Um, and I was afraid because I had never felt so poor, like it had never gotten to the point. Yes, I'd had the gallbladder attacks before, but I never had like this excruciating all over body pain. And um, I just, it was one day that I was lying in bed and my son who was six at the time, he came into the room, I had the TV on and he started watching it and he turned around and he just smiled at me. And 
something about his smile, just seeing him, just made me say, you know what, I need to do better. I need to do something more so that um, I can I can be here for him and for um, my two daughters. And then I literally, I prayed right there. Um, and after I was finished, I had a book on my night skin. Like I literally turned around it. It's like I had this moment of, of epiphany. I had Dr. Joel Furman's book, Eat to Live. I kind of skimmed it through because, you know, I'd wanted to lose weight. Like I said, I was a size 24 most of my life. And I had wanted to lose weight. So I said, okay, um, you know, I'd skim through it. And I'm like, no, this is like way too much. This is hard, I would think in my head. But at that moment, I, I just made a commitment, no matter how hard it is, I'm going to really commit to a whole food plant-based, to a really a nutrient-rich diet. And I started reading it through. I started watching different documentaries, um, whole food plant-based documentaries. Um, and I really started to really immerse myself. I said to my husband, um, I really need to get rid of all the junk food because there's no way that I'm going to be able to do this without doing that. And he agreed. He, you know, he also um, was very big. He was obese himself. And then he said, you know, he'd support me. And that's so why I literally like that day I threw away everything. Like the amount of junk food I had in my house was like unbelievable. Oreos. I mean, my kids were like, oh, no, not the Oreos. Um, everything, chips, everything. I just threw it all the way. All the sugar. I had like bags of sugar because I was always a baker. I'd always bake. Um, and for my family, my extended family growing up, I was the baker. Like I could make like these incredible desserts. I threw away all that, you know, buckets, things of oil, huge, all of it. I just threw it all in the trash. And then I just replaced them. I got fresh fruits. I got, I bought a lot of fruit baskets. I put them all over the house and put fruits in there so my kids can get used to that. I got Larabas for them so that you know that are just the ones that are just nuts and fruits so that they can have those as alternative snacks I had a cookie jar I still do and what I put in the cookie jar are just like freeze-dried apples So it's just the only ingredients are apples that are freeze-dried But just to make it seem like okay, they are getting something else in this cookie jar and they just like to you know Unscrew it and like oh, they're getting something out of this jar, but literally it's just apples still getting some sweetness and, and But you're getting some fiber in there, too. Yeah, so it sounds like you made some really heavy duty decisions right then and there. So as you're throwing these things away, what kind of emotions are you going through? I'm feeling like a sort of relief. Like part of me too is, you know, I'm a little scared because I'm thinking, okay, this is like a big change that I'm making and it's kind of sudden and I'm going to need to sustain this because I haven't been successful. I hadn't been successful before in losing weight. Like I had lost some before, gained it back. You know, I kind of changed my diet a little bit, do a little bit of exercise, but I had it made like a permanent lifestyle change. So, but this time I just felt like this is going to be different. Um, I have a plan. Um, and I just knew that I had to because I'm like, I'm too young to, uh, to die and to leave my kids. I mean, I, like I always say, anything can happen. I could get hit by a bus, whatever. But I didn't want to be the cause of my own death. Um, and then my kids would be like, oh, you know, my mom, she didn't take care of herself. And she died. I mean, I know my father died, you know, pretty young. Um, we have like heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure in my family. And he had all of those. Um, and I didn't want to go down that road. Yeah, you want to control what you can control. And one of the things that we can control is what we mm -hmm. put into our mouths. And that directly affects everything that we do. So your change in your home happened pretty much overnight, it sounds like. It was a relatively quick change. How did the whole family react to that? Um, well, like I said, the kids initially, they were like in dismay. They were like seeing all this junk food go in the trash and they were like, what? And I'm like, don't worry, I'm going to get other things. And it, it, everything is a process. So even though I threw all of those things away, it actually took me like, I would say like another six months to like totally give up the, the sugar because it was like, by the time I got to like Thanksgiving in November, I was feeling, you know, a little bit more confident. I had lost some weight. I was, my clothes were getting looser. And I was like, okay, well, I can have some vegan desserts. I'd go like to Whole Foods and I'd get like, you know, vegan sweet potato pies and all these things. But then, you know, I always say where well, there's the sugar, it comes with the oil, it comes with the white flour and all these things. And I started to feel like my gallbladder acting up. And then I just made a commitment. I remember it was like December 27th, 2013. I said, that's it. 
no more of the sugar, no, none of those kind of refined desserts. And that's it. And really, I have not had sugar since then. I just because that was my biggest thing. I was a big sugar addict. Yeah. And once you get that little bite of it, it, it keeps you wanting more. Oh. But it sounds like your yeah. body reacted very sensitively to it. So, you know, being feeling great, not having it and then, you know, a holiday coming and getting you know, the, the sweet potato pie, and then all of a sudden feeling that pain again, sounds like it sent you on a little bit of a roller coaster. So why don't you tell us what other kind of symptoms and what other kind of results your family got when you really did get rid of all the foods that were keeping you sick? Well, I would say for my kids, they've never had like an obesity problem, um, maybe a little bit overweight. But my girls, they had like irregular cycles. Their um, doctor wasn't sure like if it was like PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. But so their cycles were totally off. But once we started, they started to get regular. And the doctor was like, oh, well, they're not going to, they were seeing a specialist. They're not going to need to be on the medication that we're going to put them on. So just keep doing what you're doing. So it helped them to kind of regulate, um, you know, that issue. Um, for me, the joint pain that I had, like the massive pain just went away. I could move again. I could, and then, you know, I could, I could feel good. I could exercise. We could go to the park. I started to have more energy and we could, you know, I could play with my kids instead of just sitting there like on a bench and then, you know, watching them play and watching them go on the slides and the swings and all of that. Um, my husband, he wasn't like 100% on board. He was pescatarian. So he would still have seafood. But he would eat what I ate in the house. So he wasn't trying to like, okay, I'm going to bring in things that's going to tempt you, which was awesome because it was awesome to have that support, you know. So he probably lost maybe 20 pounds, like for like several years until he got on board, literally like four years later. So that was like two years ago. He got on board and then he had a massive um, transformation. He went from like a size 44 um, inch for men to 34 um, so that was really, and he ran a marathon, wow. um, this year he ran the Boston marathon. So, um, it really, it, it's had a, a, just a great impact. Like people who knew both of us, sometimes they don't recognize, you know, both of us. Like he was running the marathon and he had a friend on Facebook who knew him like before he married me. So many years ago and, you know, he, they didn't know that that was him. And I'm like, well, who did they think it was? Michael Besson. I mean, there are a lot of Michael Besson's I realize. I even have another Facebook friend with the same name. <laughs> um, but he was like, I didn't know it was you the entire time because he just couldn't recognize. I was like, well, he saw my page and he was like, he didn't recognize you either. So we've had people oh, wow. who just, yeah, I'm an itinerant teacher and I travel from school to school and people are like, I don't recognize you. But I think the biggest change it had for us is just, you know, our health improved. My, my husband now is no longer on high blood pressure medication. Um, he could have had a stroke because his blood pressure was high all the time. And I mean, very high. Um, he had an abnormal EKG, but now he's, he's fine. He had an echocardiogram. Everything is fine. Um, we, we just feel good. It's not just, okay, we lose the weight, you, you know, get into smaller clothes, you know, that's nice as well, but feeling well. For me, I hear a lot of people saying it was the difference between surviving and thriving. Yes. Yeah. I was just saying that. It's like we were <laughs> communicating because this morning I was thinking that, you know, it's like before, yes, we were, we were living and then we were kind of like surviving, just kind of there. And now it's thriving. It, it makes it makes huge. all the difference. And to be, you know, it's not just about the weight, but when you are overweight, it does affect all the different areas of your body. And it's not necessarily the weight, it's, it's everything that's getting you to gain that weight and, and keep that weight on. But losing that weight and being able to move around and being able to sit on a swing and go down the slide with yeah. your with your children and start to exercise again, um, all of those things make such a big difference for your mental health as well that yes. makes you then want to do more for your physical health. Exactly. And even other simple things like I didn't even think about like I'd be in the car and I have a minivan that I drive in my in my street. I'm on a one way. It's very tight. I'd have to kind of turn my body to kind of really see behind me because it's a it's narrow. And I would I didn't realize how much I would struggle with that. And then when I was smaller, like I literally I can turn my body around more. And I'm like, I'm more comfortable to see those not like biting into me. And I'm like, it seems like such a small thing. 
but it, it's a huge thing for me. Sometimes I'm on the train in Boston. We use the public transportation a lot too. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm in my own space. I'm not taking over someone else. I'm not spilling over on the plane. Like even, you know, traveling um, last week and the week before. I'm like, I'm sitting on the plane and I'm like, I'm in my own space. And that person is in his own space. That was, it, it, it really, um, it just makes a difference in your quality of life. Those, the little things that you don't think about. Just mentioned before the physical aspect and you mentioned your husband running the Bass Boston Marathon. How did physical fitness affect you before this nutritional change? And then how is it impactful and what difference does it make in your fitness now? I didn't have a lot of energy. I mean, I do a little bit of walking, but mostly I'd be driving. I um, didn't exercise. And when I when I started to make this lifestyle change, so like I started in July 2013, and then I said, okay, I'm going to have to start incorporating some exercise. Literally, I got these walk videos called Walk Way to Pounds. And that's what I started with, to do one mile, like a one mile video, which is basically walking in place. I struggled. Like the first time I did it, I almost like didn't finish it. I just pushed myself and said that you could do it. Literally, so one mile video. And then I kept doing it. And then I do the two mile video. Then I do the three mile. And then I started to become more fit. The more weight that I lost, the easier it was for me to move. And then those videos just became too easy. And I said, you know, I got to do more. So then I started to incorporate running in there. So I'd, I'd run, I'd walk, I'd do the treadmill um, a lot and I'd walk, run. You know, and I do some 5Ks and get my kids involved a bit. Um, I've done some with mostly my younger daughter. She's, um, they're all legally blind from congenital cataracts. My husband has as well. Um, and my younger daughter also has autism. So I would run with her and I guide her um, just because especially her unique needs. I'm, you know, I know her better and can help to guide her. And we'd run 5Ks together. That's amazing. So here's my question to you. You have three children. Um, with special needs, your husband is blind as well. So you, that puts a lot of, I don't want to use the word pressure, but that puts more work for you to take care of in the house. I would think that you, you can't necessarily share it as much. And there are more tasks for you to do than let's say a mother who has seeing children where they can go out on their own and things like that. So can you explain to people who tell us there's no time for exercise how you're able to put that in being a working mom with the with the tasks that you need to get done on on a daily basis. Yeah. I think there's always time is a matter of us finding time and making the commitment for time because what I had to do is and what I still do is get up earlier. Um, get up earlier. And so when I get up and I'm lucky that my husband is, he's a musician, he has, you know, more flexible schedule. And so we just have a routine. Um, I set the alarm because he sleeps so like a rock. So mm -hmm. I set the alarm. I hear it. he's up and he starts preparing the kids to get ready for school, make some, you know, their breakfasts and get the lunches together. And then I go and I work out um, and I start to get myself ready. Um, I now with this past year, I have a daughter who has nephrotic syndrome. So it's a kidney um, disease. So I have a little bit more responsibility. I have to make sure, you know, she I test her and see what her levels are because she's she she would she was spilling albumin protein. So, you know, I have like these additional tasks because of that. But I, I have a schedule. I get up earlier and I just do it because I know that if I leave the house and I go to work, when I come back, I'm not going to do it um, because I'm going to be tired from work. I'm going to start, you know, getting dinner ready and it's not going to happen. So that's when I do it. I just tell, make a commitment to doing it. And with all the time, like I look at even now, you know, I'll be on Facebook, you know, we're on social media. We have a lot of time. We really do. Um, it's just a matter of making the commitment for it. Even now, I'm making a commitment more to like doing more mindfulness, more meditation, um, because that's helped me, especially with the stress level with different, you know, like I said, the chronic um kidney condition my daughter has in the past year that I realized stress can really do a number on you. So even making the commitment for that, for exercise, to help to reduce the stress, but just for overall health, and then to have more mindfulness, more meditation and things like that, it's really important. So a time, can, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say it's doable. It, it can be done. Yeah. And, and if you do get it done first thing in the morning, it might push everything else back. But then those other things that aren't as important, 
you know, like more time on social media kind of get pushed a lot like when people are changing their diet and we keep saying add more of the good in, add more of the good yes. in because then those other you're, you're not as hungry for those other little snacks that are not necessarily the best for you. What yes. time does the alarm go off in the morning? Um, during, during the school, school year, <laughs> during the school year, five o'clock yeah. um, during the school year. And what now time we're in summer break. Bed? Um, we try to, because I have like that bedtime thing on my phone, you know, that kind of gives me, you know, a little alert, like by eight, so eight thirty, eight eight thirty. 8, 8 30, we try to, sometimes I'm still up later. You know, I like to read a lot. I'm a voracious reader, so I'm up and I'm reading. <laughs> so, um, but I really try to get to bed early because sleep is really important. It, it really is. And that plays into the whole stress too, and, and metabolization and rejuvenation of cells and, and all of that. So that, it, you know, it, it, it all plays together. I think when we first started this podcast, it was all about food and fitness for us. And then you could start to see as different episodes started to progress, you know, meditation, sleep, mm -hmm. stress management, all of those things really started to play in. Well, because it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's not just about the food. It's not just about the fitness. It's about finding the holistic view and bringing it all together to become the person that we're meant to become. And it's a journey that we all go through no matter where we are. Definitely, definitely. I look at Dr. Dean Ornish who says, you know, like he has his new book, Undo It, but he's been saying that for so long. It's like, you know, he's like four things that you have to do. You know, you know, eat well, you know, whole food, plant-based, you know, move, you know, um, have time to de-stress, prayer, meditation, and then build a community, have, you know, family community, all of those things are, are, are what makes a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. And we've yeah. talked to and him on the podcast yeah. episode. 307, I think it was. Yeah. Let's we've had him a couple of we'll times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's great. And, and you talk yeah. about building a community and that's something that we noticed you've been doing. We we saw you a few weeks back in Buffalo yeah. at one of the Veg Fests with some of our other friends who have been on the show. We had Tim on episode 209 and Josh Lajani on 207 and Jason Cohen in 308, who's bringing all you guys together. Why don't you tell us a little yeah. bit about that whole process and what's happening with you guys? So Jason Cohen has had like the big change to film that he's working on. And then he's also had his podcast, um, video series, YouTube series that he's just interviewed people. So he had, he had interviewed me and everyone else who's, who's part of it. Um, Denise Norris, Josh, Lajani and, and Tim Kaufman. Um, and then he, he, you know, he added, he had Josh that he started to get in, in the film and then he added Tim and then they had said, Oh, check with Nalita. And so when he called me, I was a little bit intimidated because like Josh and, and Tim, they were like doing marathons and everything. And I said to, to Jason, well, why do you want me? I'm just treadmill mom. That's what I said to myself, you know, to him, you know, like I just, that's, I'm not doing like all of these things, but I kind of like, owned that you know since then like i'm proud of that yeah i'm treadmill mom i don't have my marathon is my daily work that i do you know caring for my family you know working as a teacher i'm a special education teacher so I, all of my students are blind or visually impaired and a lot of them have additional disabilities as well multiple disabilities so i'm a busy wife and a mother and a teacher that's my marathon and if i'm treadmill mom that's what i can do it's fine. It's good. So, you know, Jason was like, well, we, we want someone who people can relate to, you know, who's a regular person. So I'm so grateful that I agreed to and said, yes, you know, you can come, come film us and being part of that because um, I wanted to do it if it helped one person to make a change and to improve their life. Um, I would be happy. And really, I think the, the person that it ended up helping the most first and it's not even released was my husband because it had been like four years into my journey and he still wasn't quite there. He was still like pescatarian. He was still very obese and his blood pressure wasn't good. He had to get on medication and all of that. But when they came to do the filming in Boston and he met Jason and he's like, what? You used to be overweight too. And Tim and Heather literally drove talk about community and building a community. Tim and Heather Kaufman, and I'm just getting emotional just thinking about it. they drove seven and a half hours to come and support us and have lunch with us. Like, who does that? You know, they drove seven and a half hours to come and have lunch with us. And Michael met them and he's like, wow. He was like, all these people, like in real life, he's like, he's meeting them. He's like, it's not just you. because I'm like, yeah, 
but you because you see things on social media, but when you meet the people in person, he's like, this is for real. So he really started saying, okay, maybe I, I got to really think about this and make some changes. And he did, and unbelievably so. Like he he was able to get off of his high blood pressure medication in two months. Um, and then he started running more. He started losing weight. He literally, like, at his highest, he had been, like, a 54-inch waist. That was, like, before we met, he went down to a 44-inch. And then within the two years, he went down to, like, a 34-inch waist. And he's still, you know, it's still a journey. We're both still working on improving our health, getting more fat off and all of that. But it, it made such a difference. So that film, to me, it's, like, the first person that it helped was my husband, Michael. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And that helps you back so much faster, yes. right? And it's oh, always so, yes. an exchange of energy. And that is the best exchange of energy. And that is why we got into, you know, doing what we do. Because at when Adam had a tumor and Adam had heart disease at 35, and I thought that I was going to raise two children alone, you know, we made the commitment to each other that we were going to do the very best for each other to make sure that we're here together as long as possible here for our children. But how can we help? give information, not not just inspire, but give actionable information, give actionable steps to people so that they can change their lives too, so that they never have yeah. to go through what we went through emotionally because of physical symptoms, because of yeah. lifestyle. Definitely. It's a scary place to be in. And I know a lot of times we're motivated by fear, but hopefully people can start making changes, not just being motivated by fear, but motivated by love. You know, you, you want to love yourself. You love your family. You want to be around longer. So not just being motivated by fear, but sometimes that is like the catalyst that gets us to make a change. And you, we were talking about community and there's, and you mentioned how they drove seven and a half hours to see you. It's really such an amazing community that we've become a part of and it, for people listening, if you've never been to a veg fest or an event that has the plant-based feel and environment, I really want to encourage you to get out there and meet the people because the connections that you'll make, the relationships that you could start to build with this community is really amazing. And it's something like I've never seen before. That's why yeah. we love going to these veg fests just to meet people that we haven't met before or connect with people that we have met on social media. Because once you meet in person, it's a very different feel than just seeing them online all the time. And it's something that I really want to encourage our listeners to do. When is this episode coming out? I'm not sure. If this, <laughs> if this episode's coming out before the first weekend in September, before the 6th or 7th, then people, I encourage you to come up to Toronto because we have the Toronto Veg Food Fest going on. It's nice. one of the biggest. And there's so many great speakers besides ourselves. There's so many great speakers to come and listen to. We'll be speaking there awesome. as well. But it's a great way to start to, um, you know, get yourself immersed, but also um, meet all like meet people. Everybody, we don't just speak and leave. Everybody walks around and, and you congregate yeah. and you share information and talk about sharing information we, want, we always love leaving everybody with actionable tips at the end. And you talk about making whole food plant-based simple. So what tips can you give people for really taking the stress out of thinking about taking away processed foods? Yes. Basically is to keep it simple. Just choose simple things. Like what I do is I'll buy a bunch of sweet potatoes, bake them ahead of time, put them in parchment paper bags, put them in the refrigerator buy um i buy dry beans because you know i have wait a couple stop of i'm gonna cut you off did you say cook mm -hmm. the potatoes and leave them in paper bags inside the fridge and parchment, parchment. so you know the parchment, parchment paper yeah. Um, yeah. bags that you so i cook them on, oh. a, on a parchment paper sheet but then i also buy these um parchment paper bags that um they sell at whole foods and also on amazon and so what i do is after they're baked and they're cooled off i put them in bags um i buy boxed beans from Whole Foods unsalted box beans. And when I don't have time, like I didn't prep beans ahead of time, I, I just keep it simple. I know that I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna have something. Some days, literally, if I didn't have leftovers, I'll just grab um, a sweet potato in, in one of the bags. I'll grab a box of beans and I'll grab an empty bowl so that I can heat it up, um, grab a piece of fruit and I've got lunch. So I buy a lot of frozen vegetables as well. I buy um, so that I can just steam them or roast them and it's quick and easy. 
I buy um, pre-washed salad in the boxes. Um, and that makes it easier because all of these things save me time. Like if I don't have to be there, it's like stripping off kale, rinsing up, doing all of that. It saves me time. So getting all these things and just keep it doesn't have to be like all these recipes. It really can be like my bean and veggie stew is like, you know, cook the beans, add the vegetables, add a little bit of sweet potatoes, put the seasoning, nutritional yeast. That's it. Dinner is done. Um, just keeping everything simple is what has helped me. And I love to cook. Um, so I can, you know, make something elaborate or whatever, but I'm like, it doesn't have to be elaborate. It's like, keep your food simple. And it actually helps, especially because a lot of us have come off of that pleasure trap. A lot of people suffer from food addiction because especially with all the chemicals and things that are in processed foods. So it's actually better for us to just keep things simple and your taste buds will adjust. Like I eat, plain cauliflower like roasted plain i don't even put nutritional yeast on it no, and it's good no oil, all the flavors no come salt out. nothing just nothing you taste, you taste the cauliflower and you taste that the For brownness it of it is it's so good. yes it's yeah. so delicious and it's like i never would have thought that because i i, I was a vegetarian i mean a junk food vegetarian but i didn't eat vegetables i mean at least my husband used to eat salads but for me i i didn't even eat salads i didn't even eat vegetables it might have been like something that was doused in oil before. So taste buds can change. I'm proof of that. People think that it's way more complicated to become plant-based because there's so much more prep that goes into it. And what you just said, keeping it simple in those ways really can help those people out and make it super easy for them to get great whole food, real food into their body and into their family's life just yes. by using those little tricks that you just mentioned. So that's great. Yeah. And it, it doesn't have to be expensive, but if you have that extra little bit of cash to put a little bit further towards your groceries, you can buy the potatoes pre-cut, yeah. right? You, you yeah. can buy your kale pre-shredded, right? Like, so yeah, these are things exactly. that might cost a little bit more. It doesn't have to because you can do it yourself, but it's a trade-off. Do you want to spend it, your time or do you want to spend your money? But at the end of the day, you know, on a Sunday night while we're having a different dinner, I'll cut up all the potatoes, stick them in the oven while we're eating. Yep. That doesn't exactly. take that much more time. I'm not sitting around waiting for them to be ready. And then exactly. we have them for the week. That's what I'll do sometimes like on the weekend. I was like, before I work out, wash out some potatoes, put them in the oven. It's like, I know I'm going to be working out. They may I, Something may as well happen. The beans will be in the pressure cooker. The sweet potatoes will be in the oven. Um, and then sometimes I'll even do, I use a lot of supermarket delivery services because that would save me like, two to three hours going to the supermarket, buying things. And it's so simple and so cheap. I have trust issues with people picking my food for me. Well, yeah, some people do, but for certain it. things I've had to let go. Like I say, the box salads, it's closed up and it's sealed. Right. So no one's touching that because it's it's pre-washed and it's sealed. And I pull this, the thing out. Um, and, the, and, you know, other things that I buy, like I buy organic apples, but they're bagged. Right. So, you know, and I wash all of that anyways. I wash all of, you And if know, it comes those, really like badly bruised or something like that, you could send it back or it doesn't? You Or you can ask for a refund. I know with um, all the apps that I've used at different food market services, I can just send a note and say, you know, this was bruised and, you know, this was an issue. Sometimes I'll take a picture and they'll refund it. So, my, you know, work myself up. You got to let it go. Oh my, I, and need the to, certain, I need to the meditate. That you can, yes, the things that you can let go let go the things that you can't like, you know, they'd be like certain things. Like if, you know, I might in the beginning, I'd be like, Oh, I really have to choose my own sweet potatoes because sometimes they're not whatever, but I kind of let go of that a bit. Or what I'll do is if I know like I'm nearby a whole foods and I want the Japanese sweet potatoes, I'm going to go and get a bunch of them so that that, that I'm really picky about, I choose it. Yeah. And, and you're paying a so premium on those. So you, sh you should choose them. And then to add it all up, you can like every time you're peeling the potato, you do a squat in between and then you're getting your workout done while you're cooking. I don't I, peel the potato, you eat it with the skin. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> right. We eat it with the skin, but I normally do that while I'm, while I'm frying things or like stir frying. Um, I'll be doing squats at, at, the, <laughs> at the stove. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be the, like, my kitchen is like near the back stairway and I'll just be like, okay, walk on the stairs. I have something like this in the oven. I have some time before I have to check on whatever. And I'll just go, you know, Use this two stairs, kind of like, you know, do a step aerobics. Right. And I'll be, I'll be like, okay, I'll do five minutes. Okay, go back and check on. Like, if I'm doing a stir fry, I have a stone pan, so it's going to be good. So yeah. I'll give myself, okay, five minutes of that just to get more movement in. 
Oh, oh. A little interval training. And I only use yeah. the upstairs washroom because I work from home a lot of the uh, time. If I'm not out with clients, I'm at home. So I only use the upstairs washroom so that it forces myself to get on the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, it's doing a lot of laundry. Upstairs is where the washer and dryer is. So, I'm, you know, I have to go up, check, come down, up and down. So, yeah. Mama's rule. I love how you took out that word just before when you went from I'm just a treadmill mom to like, I am the treadmill mom. Yes, Look at I me go. Yeah. <laughs> You're more than just the treadmill yeah. mom. You're super inspirational. You are doing so many amazing things with your family and taking care of them, but also teaching other youngsters in in your community who really need your guidance and, and help and I, it was really amazing to watch you in action with your family when we saw you a few weeks ago. I know we didn't have that much time to spend together, but just watching how you all interact as a family was really impressive and amazing. And I just want to thank you for, for being here to share your story with us, but also for me having the opportunity to actually meet you because it's been a very big inspiration to see people like you doing the things that you're doing just makes me want to do more of what you're doing as well. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. I mean, you guys inspire me and inspire so so many people. I mean, what you're doing with your plant trainers. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And if, if people want to reach out to you and find out a little bit more about your story or ask you some questions, if you're open to that, where would you like them to go to connect with you? Um, the best place is Facebook, um, and I have my Facebook page, um, Plant Based God's Grace, um, and that's where I usually, you know, will write, kind of like, you know, put, you know, journaling, put information, um, and just sh share about my own journey, my family's journey. Amazing. So face Facebook is the place. Amazing. And we'll put links to that in our show notes. We'll get your Facebook page in there. We're also going to link to the episodes that we talked about earlier in the big change, the film. So it'll all be in there for people to check out at planttrainers.com. Again, thank you so much for spending time with us today. And we look forward to connecting again in the future. Thank you so much. It was so great meeting both of you face to face at the yeah. Veggie Fest in New Seeing the Niagara Falls from the American <laughs> yes. side. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. That was <laughs> awesome. That was really nice. Okay. Take care. Take care.